care about this, but uh, this is the biggest spread that SMU has had in five years. Um, I'll preface that, or I'll end that by saying, what are you, what are you trying to get out of this week, and what did you challenge your players for this game? Well, I mean, first and foremost, we got to get a win. That's that's the number one objective every week. Um, you know, we've talked to them about a lot of times week one to week two. You got to make a lot of improvements. There's a lot of things on both sides of the ball, and obviously on special teams with, with the turnover, we can clean up. And so, um, but we've had an us mentality back even before we played anybody that that we've got to worry about us and be our best each week. And then, you know, if that's the case, then then the, the outcome will be what it'll be. And so we've really challenged them this week that we've got to be better in week two than we were in week one. And, um, you know, that's the, that's the reality of it. As coaches, do you, I mean, with all that considered, do you kind of look at this as a barometer to see how your players handle this? Because, I mean, obviously your team played really well in week one. This is not Alabama coming in. Just do you look at it as like, a, let's see how our guys handle this kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, 100%. Like, everything's new, right? We played our first game. We won. Um, you know, how do we handle success? I mean, all the things that you're trying to figure out as you learn your players and they learn you and you learn your team and the makeup of your team, every year your team makeup's different. And so how are we going to respond? Yeah, it's a big deal. I mean, um, Lamar's very well coached. and we got to come out and play well uh, more than anything because we got to win. What was the, the film session like, kind of really getting to, to see what you guys did and, <clears throat> and break down some stuff a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I mean, look, everybody sees the score and, and this or that. I mean, we did a lot of things well in general, but – um, you know, there was a lot of opportunities that if a play had gone a different way, the game could have gone a different way. And so ultimately we were really good on defense in the red zone and we were good on both sides of the ball on third down. And I think that's what helped us to pull away. But, um, you know, we turned the ball over on offense, give them the ball to 30. We fumbled opponent to 30. They only get three points. That's rare. You know, they had the ball inside the five two times, got zero points. That's incredible by our defense, but that's rare. And so um, there was a lot of things on both sides of the ball that led to us putting ourselves in certain situations that that's where the improvement has to happen. What's your assessment of the O-line so far, getting to see a lot of different guys kind of play in that, in that group? Yeah, I think we're still a work in progress as we are as a team. I mean, I think overall we did okay the other night. Uh, we weren't as good as we'd like to be running the football early in terms of our IDs. I and mean, I thought we ran the football effectively. But just, you know, first couple drives, first game, I thought we settled in there well. Um, you know, Tanner took a couple of hits he probably didn't take. But – in general, I like their attitude. They're trying to play physical. I think they're on the same page. Garen does a good job. And we feel like we have somewhere between six to eight guys that we can put in the game and, and function well. Jake Bailey um, obviously was you know, hurt shoulder in mm -hmm. camp and then kind of left the last game. What's the update on him? And do you maybe have a little bit of caution to yeah. put him back in there so quick? Yeah, I would say he's he's going to be week to week at this point. Um, and, you know, we'll see. I know he wants to continue to try to play through it. Um, Obviously, the way it went in game one shows you that may be tough. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll take it week to week until we maybe decide one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And um, But, no, it's not ideal. How about Kavaris and um, Jahari, the other guys that also had to leave that game? Yeah, Jahari's fine. He was just cramping. Um, KD still don't know for sure his availability this weekend. It wasn't as serious as we first thought. That was a positive. Mm -hmm. So we just um, – Probably we'll make a decision sometime tomorrow for this weekend. With Tanner, obviously you weren't here last year, but from the film you saw last year, what you saw in, in obviously the, the off season, what did you kind of think of his, his performance uh, Saturday? You know, I, I thought he played really well. I thought he played tough. Um, I thought he threw the deep ball well, which is something we've worked really hard on since we got here in spring, summer, and fall. Credit him and our guys. We throw the deep ball. We like to anyways. And, and he threw some really nice deep balls the other night. And I think that's an area of his game that he's really improved on. Uh, with the high school season starting and, you know, you guys opening up the home slate too, recruiting starts to pick back up, what's your approach with, you know, in-season getting out on the trail and things like that with the assistants? And then, you know, just how excited are you to have recruits back on campus? Yeah, I mean, we'll, uh, we'll have recruit, uh, coaches, excuse me, out starting uh, tomorrow, Thursday and Friday this week. I think there's some Thursday night games and Friday. Pretty much local for the most part. Of course, that's pretty much what we do. And then um, – you know, having a home game, getting to have recruits on campus for the first time, um, you know, really since the end of June, uh, will be good. And, you know, I, I think a lot of guys are excited to come watch us play here at home. Tanner had a couple of deep balls that seemed like he threw off his back foot and kind of was able to still get a lot of, you know, speed on it or just touch on it. I guess was that something, was that an impressive part? I mean, with pass rushing his face, kind of off his foot. I mean, obviously, ideally, you want good football. But. Yeah. No, no, he made a great throw to Curly for the touchdown. We. We are, are we got beat on the right side just a little bit more than you'd like to. He shouldn't have had to do that, but he did. 
And then uh, we had a miscommunication on the one. He hit Gage Haskins down the sideline, and he did a nice job of sliding. That was a great throw on the run. So he did make two really impressive throws, maybe. And then really even the touchdown to Rasheed, they were zero blitzing, and he had to stick his foot in the ground and get it up. So, um, yeah, that those some of those were just really good plays. Um, and the reality of it is you, you work to have your feet set and all, but that's not always the case. I mean, look, if you – in the course of a game, usually your quarterback's going to have to make four or five plays outside the scope of what's normal. He's going to have to make plays like that for you to win. And a lot of times, which QBs do and don't, or which ones become turnovers, is the difference in close games. You know, most of the time, if he just does his job and gets it where it needs to go, he's fine. But there are those moments, and I thought what he did a good job of was when those moments were there, he made those plays, and when they weren't, he didn't force them and try to make other things happen. He trusted the offense. He trusted his players or his teammates. And, uh, and kind of, you know, the old saying, let the game come to him, but he did that well. With uh, Rasheed and, and Jordan both went over 100 yards. First time SMU's had a had two 100-yard receivers since 2019. Really? Obviously, not wow. necessarily something you game plan to try and do, but what does it say about your style of offense and the quality of, <clears throat> of quarterback and receivers that you have? Well, I think the, the it, it shows that hopefully some of those guys, you know, Curly being healthy helps. Um, Rasheed being back and being a veteran helps. And we got some other guys. I think we had a bunch of different guys catch balls, four, four different touchdown catches. You know, look, we, we can we can try to get matchups where we need to. Like, and that's coaching. But we're also not trying to force feed the ball. I didn't feel like we were trying to force the ball to Rasheed the other night. I honestly didn't even realize he had eight catches till after the game. Um, and just let the offense do what it needs to do and the quarterback uh, distribute the ball where it needs to go. And um, it's just one game. But, you know, I thought, it gave our guys some confidence. What did you think of the news that the college football playoffs is going to expand? I think it's awesome. Does I that mean, help you guys? We all knew it was coming. It's like delaying the inevitable. It was going to happen a year or two ago or whenever that was, and then it didn't, and we all knew it was still going to happen. And um, I think it's great. Look, it's really the only major sport that there's not a playoff. I mean, we can call the four-team deal a playoff, but it's it's a four-team, you know, whatever. Um, I think it's great. I, I think – um, you know, obviously there's things you got to handle with the scheduling and the amount of games and, and the, over the December break and school. But all those things, if we want to, can be can be handled. But you go from the NFL has the playoffs, Division I AA has the playoffs, all the other major sports have playoffs. Um, I think it's going to be awesome for college football. I think it gives more teams an opportunity, and I think a lot more games matter. And um, I think it's great. Here's a fun question. You've been, you've been on a lot of, you know, different programs and gone to different venues. What would be the – toughest playoff venue to have to go up to or or, or uh, go play at in your mind? Ford Stadium. <laughs> what? How's that? <laughs> no, I mean, look, my time in the SEC played in some pretty loud places. Um, and probably because I spent the most time there, Auburn's pretty daggum loud. Uh, but really, any of the top six or eight in that league, if they want to be, it, it's nuts. And got to play at Clemson. It's a great atmosphere. Virginia Tech. So, you know, at the end of the day, that stuff's – if you're a competitor, you actually kind of like playing on the road more, to be honest with you. So, um, but hey, if we get in the playoff, we'll go play them wherever they want to play. Thanks, Coach.